Christmas comes but once a year, and when it does, it brings with it sidewalk Santas, Mariah Carey, and of course, eggnog. But have you ever wondered, what is eggnog? Does it have an egg in it? Does it have a nog in it? Where does it come from? And what does it want from us? Well, today we're going to the bottom of the punch bowl to answer, what the hell is eggnog? But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History Food channel. After that, please leave a comment and let us know what other mysterious holiday foods you would like to hear about next. Okay, tis the season to be noggy. Okay, so all kidding aside, we do actually know what eggnog is. We looked it up. The bizarre holiday beverage, which was once known as milk punch or egg milk punch, does in fact have eggs in it. In fairness, they did kind of tell us. According to the Food Network, eggnog is traditionally made with eggs, egg yolk, sugar, milk, heavy cream, and vanilla extract. That already sounds pretty good. But eggnog is also usually juiced with an extra little holiday spirit. Or in other words, it's usually spiked with more booze than a fraternity bath mat. The Food Network recommends brandy. And using whiskey or rum certainly won't get you into any trouble with the Christmas police. But at least one professional bartender encourages people to get creative and try eggnog spiked with things like mezcal and creme de cacao. Whatever you choose, good eggnog is usually then topped off with a little freshly grated nutmeg, cinnamon sticks, cloves, or star anise. Or all of those things, if you happen to be the extravagant type. If it's all combined correctly, you should wind up with a sweet, creamy beverage that has a texture like melted ice cream and a custardy flavor, cut slightly by the booze. But if you don't have any fancy alcohol or star anise, don't let that stop you. One of the great beauties of eggnog is that pretty much anybody can make it at home because it doesn't require any expensive or difficult to find ingredients to create, nor any great culinary skill to pull off. Which is to say, you can whip up a batch if you use your noggin. <laughs> oh yeah. That covers the eggs, but right about now you might be asking, what gives with the nog? Well, to be perfectly honest, no one is exactly sure where the nog in the name eggnog came from. What we do know is that the first known use of the word nog originated in 1693. But beyond that, there are only theories. There are a lot of them. The Oxford English Dictionary, for example, reports that nog was a kind of strong beer brewed in East Anglia. But others have pointed out that the word could just as easily be derived from noggin, a Middle English term for a small carved wooden mug that was used to drink alcohol. And it's also the name of the thing that starts hurting if you've had too much. Yet another theory holds that the name is derived from grog, a colonial era name for rum that was allegedly served with eggs and was known as eggengrog which eventually became eggnog. Oh, I like that one. Still others think it has something to do with a Scottish drink called Nuggedal, the word nugget referring to being warmed with a hot poker. The online etymology dictionary, on the other hand, claims the term is an Americanism and that nog comes from an archaic word for strong ale. It could also be named after Quark's nephew on Star Trek Deep Space Nine. There's simply no way to know. We may not know where the nog and eggnog comes from, but the drink itself almost certainly came from the same country that gave us James Bond, the Beatles, and King Ralph. Jolly old England. Culinary historians generally agree that eggnog is, in one way or another, derived from a hot, milky, ale-like drink called posset. Curdled with ale or sometimes wine, posset was popular in early medieval Britain. The drink has evolved quite a bit over the centuries. 13th century monks drank it with eggs and figs. A 17th century recipe calls for a heated mixture of cream, 18 egg yolks, eight egg whites, cinnamon, mace, nutmeg, and one pint of sack wine. Hmm, is that like box wine? Because if it is, we've got you covered. And through all the variations, posset stayed popular in England all the way into the 19th century. It's weird to think now, but way back in medieval times, eggnog was mostly reserved for the rich. Why? Because milk, eggs, and booze were expensive and were generally the kind of thing you had to be wealthy to enjoy. Beverages made from such costly ingredients were commonly used to toast to health and, more importantly, prosperity. And it was English settlers in search of prosperity who brought eggnog to the New World. Since most of the colonists were farmers, they were pretty stacked with chickens and cows, which meant beverages that included milk and eggs were suddenly easy to make. Cheap rum was also readily available. 
And that has remained unchanged in the intervening centuries. An affordable supply of ingredients may be why eggnog became popular in both the U.S. and Canada, where Francophiles refer to the beverage as lait de poule, or chicken's milk. These days, eggnog is practically synonymous with Christmas. However, the Bible conspicuously doesn't mention it. So how did the association begin? Well, for starters, the fact that it's served warm makes it an ideal winter drink. On top of that, nutmeg, cinnamon, and vanilla are all considered seasonal flavors. And since they frequently turned up in eggnog, eggnog became associated with the season. However, most researchers place the beginning of eggnog as a Christmas drink during the American Revolution. You see, during the Revolutionary War, rum from the Caribbean wasn't quite as plentiful. Since that was the rum of choice for eggnog, they decided to preserve the rum in the nog for special occasions, like Christmas. That being said, lots of Revolutionary Era Americans simply had to make other arrangements to spike their nog. Most turned to domestic spirits like whiskey, bourbon, or even moonshine. Hey, any port in a storm. You could even use port. Whether you needed to chop down a cherry tree, defeat King George, or drink a whole lot of booze, George Washington got results, and eggnog was no exception. The father of America also had his own personal nog recipe. If you're looking to do it the way Mr. Dollar Bill did, his recipe calls for a quart of cream, a quart of milk, a dozen tablespoons of sugar, and all the booze in your pantry. George apparently made his nog with a pint of brandy, half a pint of rye whiskey, half a pint of Jamaica rum, and a quarter pint of sherry. You don't want to overdo it on the sherry. It's a pretty good recipe, but George neglected one minor detail. He forgot to mention how many eggs go in it. The man was so laser focused on recording the proper amount of alcohol that he forgot the primary ingredient. But his chefs learned to guesstimate the recipe with about a dozen eggs. Washington, it is worth noting, wasn't the only US president with a yen for nog. Dwight D. Eisenhower, America's 34th chief executive, also apparently loved making the stuff. And according to reports, nothing could get you drunk faster than Ike's eggnog. We like Ike, and Ike likes nog. Ike actually remembered to include the eggs in his recipe, which also called for a pound of sugar, a quart of coffee cream, a quart of whipped cream, and a quart of bourbon. Correspondence for the National Review found it to be very alcoholic, surprisingly light and creamy in density, not in richness or calories. That's high praise for some nog. Also sometimes known as the Grog Mutiny, which sounds like a pirate labor strike, the 1826 eggnog riot went down on Christmas Day. What else? At the United States Military Academy. The students of West Point held a Christmas party where they got absolutely cheer-faced on whiskey-spiked eggnog. The possession of alcohol was allegedly a serious offense at the academy and could result in punishments as serious as expulsion. So the cadets lied about keeping the nog alcohol-free and then smuggled in a load of whiskey big enough to cause a riot. According to a witness, a large number of the cadets got on a spree and became excessively riotous, setting all officers at defiance, and even with a drawn sword, chasing one to his room. The officers called for troops to round up the troublemakers, but that just turned the students into a mob, which eventually involved a third of all cadets at the school. Long story short, 70 cadets were arrested and 20 were court-martialed. One of the cadets who was involved in the riot but never faced a court-martial was future president of the Confederacy, Jefferson Davis. That guy just never got over breaking the rules. On its official website, the U.S. Army says of the eggnog riots, Years have passed since the cadets overindulged on eggnog, but the moral of their story is still applicable. Too much of the good stuff can lead to serious consequences. Or a nap on the couch. Sometimes the American version of a product, no matter how beloved, just isn't right for the rest of the world. That's why Mexico has its own version of Breaking Bad, called Metastasis. And it's why a whole bunch of countries have decided to put their own local spin on eggnog. In Puerto Rico, for example, they have an eggnog-like drink known as Coquito. The name means little coconut, and the beverage is made with coconut milk, as well as cream of coconut, sweetened condensed milk, vanilla, nutmeg, clove, cinnamon, and Puerto Rican rum. That is a hell of a nog. If that interests you, you might find it on some menus under the name Puerto Rican eggnog. Similarly, Mexico has its own version known as rompope, which is made with eggs, milk, vanilla flavor, and of course, some festive hooch. Usually Mexican rum or grain alcohol, with Mexican cinnamon usually finding its way into the mixture as well. Peru, for their part, has Biblia con pisco, 
an eggnog-like drink made with a pumice brandy called Pisco. And across the Atlantic, Germany has a beer-based variation called Beersuppe. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. You could fill an entire It's a Small World ride with just the different eggnogs of the world. Although you'd probably wish you'd had a few before you started. Eggnog is not just a spice and or rum delivery system. It can actually serve as a key ingredient in a whole bunch of tasty sounding mixed drinks. For example, take some ordinary store-bought eggnog and mix it with vanilla flavored vodka and some amaretto. Pour into a martini glass, throw in some cinnamon, nutmeg and a cinnamon stick, and bam! You've got yourself an eggnog martini. Or if you're the kind of person who wouldn't say nyet to a white Russian eggnog, all you need is some nog, ice, vodka, kalua, cinnamon, and nutmeg. Pumpkin spice is optional. And if you're lucky enough to have some jalapeno-infused tequila, mezcal, chai syrup, and chocolate shavings, then you can make yourself a spicy horchata-style eggnog. We hear it's muy bueno. Needless to say, if you leave any of these for Santa, some kids are going to be opening the wrong gifts on Christmas morning. Eggnog was wildly popular in the 1800s. And though its popularity dipped a bit during the Prohibition era, for obvious reasons, as soon as the booze was flowing again, so was the eggnog. By the 1940s, varieties with and without alcohol were being sold in supermarkets. And by the 1960s, it was being mass-produced to meet the overwhelming Christmas season demand. So how is eggnog doing today? Well, despite health concerns, a relatively hefty price, and the fact that Americans consume over 40% less milk than they did 50 years ago, according to Forbes, eggnog sales have actually quadrupled in the last 50 years. However, it's only popular during the Christmas season, because only freaks drink eggnog on December 26th. A lot of folks do get surly over the fact that eggnog is only available two months a year. So what is going on there? Well, for starters, most commercial eggnogs have, let's say, a festive amount of sugar. This is because most recipes take into account that the drink will likely be diluted with alcohol and ice. So if you're knocking back the nog without any booze, you're probably drinking way more sugar than you realize. Sugar can obviously be addictive. So the question then becomes, how much sugar are we really taking in here? According to CNN, the holiday drink often tops 20 grams of sugar, the equivalent of five teaspoons, for a mere half cup serving. So a cup of eggnog contains roughly the same amount of sugar as a bag of Skittles. A few sips of that will make some fairies dance in your head for sure. In the same CNN story, Stephen Young, a dairy and food technologist, pointed out that eggnog is a lot like ice cream. It's cold, and it's sweet, and it tastes good, especially when you haven't had it for 10 or 11 months. He makes an excellent point. Eggnog's narrow window of availability probably does play a key psychological role in its appeal. After all, there's just something about a thing you can only get for a limited time that makes it all the more sweet, and almost forces you to overindulge. But isn't that what the holidays are all about? So what do you think? And are you a fan of the nog? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other videos from Weird History Food.